created music, he orchestrated this potent tool primarily for his praise and worship. God is the author of music. Music is for worshiping and praising God. That's the primary thing it's supposed to do. But there was a distortion in this divine plan. When the enemy said, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the Most High. But he was cast down from heaven. Being a master of deception, he has totally distorted and corrupted the beautiful gift of music as he desperately leads many astray by deceptively instilling in the minds of the unsuspecting a culture of satanic worship through the use of symbolisms in music. One of the areas you must be very careful is in music, symbolisms, music. And I've warned and you need to take this seriously. These symbolisms show up in imagery that lure many into worshiping occult practices, promote sexual perversion, and other immoral vices such as drug addiction and drunkenness. And in lyrics that blaspheme and glorify rebellion against God and His Word. And that is Jesus bowing down to the goat. Once again, goats are unbelievers or at worst, Satan or the Baphomet. And even if it did mean greatest of all time, it makes no sense to have Jesus bowing down to himself. Unwittingly, the young and unsuspecting rave about these and idolize the bearers of these demonic depictions. When it comes to music and dance, they're connected to your emotions, directly connected to your soul. And that's what Satan wants. He wants to make connection with your soul. And the ultimate plan is to deter us from getting to relate properly with God and to get us to be a worshiper of the devil. You can't help but come to the conclusion that there is a purpose-driven objective on behalf of these people to communicate a specific idea to the audience. They are telling a story, and that story, that narrative, is deeply rooted in occult symbolism, and it's putting it out on blatant full display, and it's mocking Christianity. In 1946, which was 76 long years ago, a Satanist by the name of Alice Bailey, who was also regarded as one of the founders of the New Age movement, wrote a 10-point charter to destroy and eliminate Christianity so that the New Age philosophies may become the one world religion for the world. The 10-point charter by Alice Bailey are as follows. Number one, take God and prayer out of the education system. Two, reduce parental authority over the children. Three, destroy the Judeo-Christian family structure or the traditional Christian family structure. Four, if sex is free, then make abortion legal and make it easy. Five, make divorce easy and legal free people from the concept of marriage for life. 6. Make homosexuality an alternative lifestyle. The base art. Make it run mad. 8. Use media to promote and change mindsets. 9. Create an interfaith movement. Number 10. Get governments to make all these laws and get the church to endorse these changes. Unknown to many, Music and arts have been exploited as major tools for driving this sinister agenda for several years. Tragically, some of these things have crept into the Church of Jesus Christ. Music that is not of God, I say it's very dangerous to go into some kind of um, uh, music that is basically worldly, not known to be Christian. And then we want to Christianize it. How worldly should we get to win the world? How worldly should we be?
to win the world. How far should we go to get their attention? We have to be like them to do so? That is a confession of your spiritual bankruptcy. Because if you were full of the Spirit, think of, just think the very thought of it. If the apostles said, you see, we have to be like the Pharisees to win them. That's not what Paul was saying when he talked about being like a Jew. That's not what he meant. But we don't have to now be like them. We don't have to have their music for them to listen to our music. We don't have to dance like them for them to think that we're dancing for God. I believe that if you love God, then you, you wouldn't be a friend of the world. And I was a friend of the world. And I listened to, to different rappers, all these different rappers, not thinking about the lyrics of what they, what they were saying, bro. And so because of that, when I've heard nothing but lustful actions towards women, my parents and the Bible teaches you to respect women and wait towards marriage. But because I was listening to that music, guys, I was more prone to actually have sex before marriage. You know what I mean? Because you have to realize that our subconscious mind holds 95% of our brain. Bro. A lot of people don't get that. So not only their conscious thoughts now, it's going into their own, their subconscious. The guy is sleeping and is dreaming things he should not be dreaming of. Music, particularly among adolescents, um, is a very powerful motivator of behavior. Um, it wasn't so long ago that an entire war was turned on the basis of youth music um, with Vietnam. Um, and music was really central to the counterculture and the culture that rose up and said, we're not going to take this anymore. I don't think we should underestimate the power of music because music touches the limbic system or the emotional system of our brain, which actually, though slower than other parts, can overwhelm all of the other parts. We can't expect a system to be put together that will perfectly protect us. Um, we need to protect ourselves. We need to be aware that these media change us and affect us. In the process of time, the demons start coming into their lives because it's an invitation to devils. First, unclean thoughts. Either they might be thoughts of fear or they're thoughts of a sensual nature. Unclean thoughts are coming to them. You find a Christian, a nice Christian, who loves the Lord, but now he's struggling with unclean thoughts, dirty thoughts, sexual thoughts. And he doesn't know where they're coming from. They're coming from the dance. They're coming from the music. They're coming sometimes from the books they're reading. How does Christ come into the heart of a man? When you believe in Jesus Christ, he comes into your heart. You don't see the process. It's not like you have a feeling and then somehow you're, you're witnessing that Christ is coming in right now. He's coming in. Oh, he has entered. No. Just by believing. All you do is you open your spirit to God, the Lordship of Jesus Christ, and bam, that's it. The light of God has come into your heart. The same process. You open those things, and you're looking at things that the demons have inspired. Once your heart goes out to them, that's it. You have demons following you from then on. I said reggae, for example. Where did it come from? What's the source of reggae music? Music is psychology, you see? And if the music does not penetrate the heart, the soul, and the mind, and the body, then you ain't gonna feel it. Because reggae music is not something that you hear, it's something you feel, see? And if you don't feel it, you can't know it, see? It is a spiritual music with spiritual ingredients for spiritual purposes. And I've never seen anybody who was into reggae for a long time and didn't have demonic activities come into his home and into his life. And I'm serious.
so don't deceive yourself so oh, well uh, god has called me into this uh, if god is calling you into something it needs to be pure it needs to be from god it shouldn't be something that's going to be bringing devils into your life but reggae is not the only one have you ever noticed juju worshipers they drum a lot they drum a lot and they dance a lot a lot of the dancing steps that people get from the world a lot of them are to demons these are things that are the movements of devils I've dealt a lot with people with evil spirits. Some of you may have been in some meetings where we're doing those things. The moment I start addressing the evil spirit, you see some, they start dancing. And the, the, the guy or the girl is not in control. They go like this. How many of you have seen them? And you think they're going to fall. They can bend in an awkward way and still be standing. Why? Because it's not them. It's the evil spirit. And they're twisting themselves in some funny way. If you began to drum for them, they will show you their dance. The same dance that they do at the shrines. Music is a spiritual thing. You don't play with music. If you play with music, you will die young. You see, because when the higher forces give you the gift of music, musicianship, it must be well used. I get possessed by, by the spirits. I get possessed by, by the spirits. Right before I performed, I raised my hands up, and it was kind of the first time I, I felt something else come into me, felt something else come into me. And so I sold my soul to the devil, sold my soul to the devil. It appears that it is these demonic beings that energize Jackson when he hits the stage. Jackson stated, quote, when I hit the stage, it's all of a sudden a magic from somewhere that comes and the spirit just hits you and you lose control of yourself. Then there's this other, there's this other uh, kind of music. I watch the young people and I see that they've taken it into the church and when they're dancing they're dancing and they have their hand here have you seen it have you seen it very stupid dance very stupid dance very offensive dance and they've carried it from the world and brought it into church the reason I'm telling you this is about symbolisms. There are dances that people have and they're doing them in churches, but these dances are demonic. They're inspired by demons. And they're being danced in churches by so-called musical leaders and music, whatever they call themselves. What's actually happening is these are offerings and libations that are that are being offered to satan through symbolisms and demons thrive on these offerings you have to understand you have to understand demons feed on worship so desperate is the adversary in this quest that he also seeks to lure, deceive and culture innocent children into offering satanic worship from an early age by infusing subliminal messages and symbolisms in music and films targeted at children. Satan's not an evil guy He wants you to learn and question why He wants you to have fun and be yourself And by the way, there is no hell Science is important so we understand the world Satan looks for truth Let's help him boys and girls Satan's not an evil guy He wants you to learn and question why He wants you to have fun and be yourself And by the way, there is no hell Everyone is different 
that's okay with Satan. He'll always treat you equal, whether you're black, white, or gay. Satan-inspired theosophist Alice Bailey is quoted to have said, When you are changing a nation, don't bother with the old people. They are too stuck in the old traditions. They will not change. But go for the children, especially 10 years and younger. Uh, does this look wholesome to you? This video alone can freak out parents, but the Satanic Temple is trying to reach students by getting into elementary schools nationwide. The group says it's an alternative to a Christian-based after-school program. Number 7's Mark Boyle's been looking into this, and Mark, they say it's a kid-friendly club. That's right. Hard to believe, but that's exactly what they preach here. And this is the parental permission slip that they're handing out so your kid can participate. Here's the After School Satan website. They even have a children's book dedicated to this. Now, they say there are some wholesome activities and lessons to be learned, but others believe it has no place around children. It could turn into one hellish extracurricular activity. That is, if the Satanic Temple has its way. We're not actually talking about Satan and Satanism because we have no interest in converting. It's just that in our religion, science and reason is what is the most valued. We do not believe in an actual devil. Um, we, in our clubs, we do not do any sort of rituals or devil worshiping or any kind of like sacrificing of goats, all the scary things that are kind of made up in people's heads. We simply ask where kids can be kids, where they can interact with other children. But there is obviously a lot of concern here. Some like Liberty Council founder Matt Staver say the club is nothing more than a bunch of atheists trying to fight back against Christian-based after-school programs. This particular so-called Satanist club is not wanting to be there to express a viewpoint. They're wanting to disrupt the process. I want to say that everybody's entitled to their beliefs. However, I feel like that's just a little odd. They already took you know, God out of schools, but now they're going to allow Satan in. It's just crazy. We're disconnecting Satan and his works from the nations, from the cities. We're disconnecting him. And he cannot proceed. He cannot proceed with his acts. He cannot proceed. Music is a reflection of the culture and ideals of a people. Little wonder the adversary seeks to culture the world with the ideals of darkness through symbolisms in music and arts. But while the church remains, we will culture the nations aright. Feeling the nations with the sons of our kingdom, that they may worship the one true God, who is the true author of music and Lord over all. Revelations chapter 11 verse 15 says, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever.